Hello, my name is Nandy Soccer and I'm here to talk about Dragon Age lore. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Dragon Age lore. Today we talk about one of the most important names in Thedas. A woman whose name is revered from the most northern parts of Antiva, Ravain, and Tevinter to the most southern parts of Ferelden and Ovlay. Andraste is also known as the Bride and the Prophet of the Maker, but to learn about her we need to learn a little bit about the human race in ancient Thedosian times. It is unknown where humans came from originally, but when they eventually settled in Thedas, they were one tribe called the Neromanians, a tribe from which all other human tribes across Thedas came from. One of such tribes was called the Alamori, a tribe that settled in what is now known as Ferelden, born to Eldereth, the chieftain of the northernmost tribe of the Alamori, and Brona of the Syrian tribe, Andraste was believed to be born in what is now known as Denerim. She would eventually marry Mephirth, the son of Hagar II and Theluis, a prominent pair of the Alamori tribe who ruled what is now Eastern Ferelden. Their legacy is all but forgotten except for being known as the parents of the betrayer. The marriage between Andraste and Mephirath was to unify the southern tribes, a unification that proved to be challenging as most of the small barbarian tribes of the south didn't feel the wrath of northern Tevinter yet, but that would change with time. Andraste's father, Eldereth, was killed by some Tevinter mages raiding an Alamari settlement. This death meant that ruling the northern parts of the Alamori territory fell on Mephira's shoulders, and the unified people loyal to Eldereth was now loyal to his daughter, the wife of Mephirath, who, upon her father's death, was captured as a Tevinter slave. So naturally, after Mephirath was in charge, negotiated her release from her slaver captors. According to Emperor Dracon, when Andraste was but a young girl, she woke up one night to find her half-sister Halicer following some lights into the wood. Following her sister into the night, a violent, unidentified event happened that lit the forest on fire. Later on, Andraste was found pale and shivering while her half-sister's body lays beneath her with wounds that do not match any known weapons. The coldness of that night left Andraste with a lung sickness that kept her weak for years. It would take her decades to be able to bear any children. Also, after that event, Andraste would often have some trance moments when she would stay still for a really long time, and when she snaps out of it, claimed that she heard voices and sounds of bells. Later in her life, Andraste would recall the events of Halliser's death as a matter of heresy. These visions and periods of immobility would give Andraste a lot of time to contemplate on the purpose and the meanings of said visions, eventually concluding that these messages were from the Maker himself. In the times when the old beliefs of Tevinter were crumbling after the first flight, this made for a rife time for a new religion to start. A lot of people would flock to the new belief and contemplate on Andraste's visions, which in time started to make more sense. The visions became more vivid and with more established purpose and objectives. She began to see herself as a true prophet of the Maker, sent to spread his word and light. It didn't help the winter that its borders were held mainly by barbarians, who saw best in following one of their own than following the magisters of the Imperium. A lot of events that followed the first flight were interpreted as a revenge of the Maker over the winter. A lot of lands were parched, rivers changed course, famine and fire ravaged the country, all of these were results of the blight, but Andraste's follower saw it as the hand of the Maker striking down against the unfaithful. Andraste's husband, Mephirath, was a great tactician. He used his wife's inspiration to win a lot of battles with minimal losses, until finally they were at the doors of the capital of the Imperium, Minrathos. While Tevinter forces were huge, 
they were torn by struggles within the Imperium after the silence of the old gods. The Battle of the Valerian Fields was brutal, went from a siege to an open fight, then back to a siege, but eventually Andrast his inspiration along with Mephiroth's battle mastery won the fight. After winning the Valerian Fields, Andraste's forces kept digging deeper into the Winter territory, ignoring frequent colossal losses along the way. The Maker's will was not to capture the heart of the Imperium, it was to destroy the heretics, and she was obliged. She was set to spread the light of the Maker into the heart of the heretic beast. Mafirath, as a tactician, saw what the faithful were doing, not in a spiritual light, but in a military one, and he knew that what was happening was a recipe for disaster. He is known for his betrayal, but what if his betrayal was a last attempt to protect what the barbarians have won so far? This doesn't take away from the fact that what Mafirath did was dreadful conspiring with Archon Hesarian to capture Andraste, a disguised Devinter force managed to capture her in Nevara and transport her back to Devinter, where she got burned on the stake as a warning to anyone who might be brave enough to even think about opposing Devinter. And that was the end of the story of Andraste, the Maker's Bride. Because she was physically weak from her night in the woods and her sister's death, Andraste couldn't right away bear any children, which pushed Mephirath to have three children with a concubine called Gilivan. The children's name were Isurath, Evrion, and Verald. Isurath was the eldest son. He distanced himself from his father's tainted legacy which gave him an edge in his pursuit of unifying the Syrian tribes to stand as one nation. His endeavor resulted down the line in creating one of the most powerful nations in Thedas, Orlé. His ending was not because of what his father did, but was because of what his wife, Jushafs, did, which we will talk about in a minute. What his wife did after his death was what actually shaped what Orlé is currently like. Evryon was the middle child. His main goal after his mother's death was to spread her message. He is the reason why the Free Marches is such a group of independent nations. He led a nomadic lifestyle and when his father's betrayal came to light, he gave away his holdings and abandoned his lineage. The youngest and probably the most problematic child was Verald. He ruled Navarra using the connections to his father as a leverage to gain more power. Subsequently, when his father's betrayal was known, he was vilified and his court was killed to the last man. He fled to Urlé, where his brother Isureth still ruled. Power struggles ensued and eventually Verald conspired with his brother's wife, Jujavis, and killed his own brother and married her to have a legitimate claim to the throne. Eventually, Jujavis killed him and ruled as the Syrian ruler of Urlé. After decades, when Andraste was finally strong enough to bear any children of her own, she gave birth to two daughters, Ibris and Viviel. Ibris was weak, like her mother, so she eventually died of the plague in her 20s, and her own daughter died later in an accident when she was on her way to Denrim. Viviel, on the other hand, fell in love with a Deventer mage, exiled herself, and cut all ties right before the betrayal was known. She had multiple daughters, which she actively hid their identities. After the death of Andraste, Mafirath did not enjoy the countless spoils of his wife's legacy. Instead, he divided it among his children, hoping that this will act as a defense against the winter if the Imperium would go back on its colonial ways. After all, this is why he betrayed his wife. After the betrayal came to light, Mephirath was killed in an undocumented event, and there is no burial site known for the general. Thank you so much for listening to this week's video. Next week, I think we are going to talk about Tevinter. We're gonna take a deep dive into Tevinter, as Instantiate this asked me to talk about it, and it's going to be extremely interesting to talk about, so I can't wait. Uh, if you like the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, you know the drill. Thank you so much again, and see you next week.